Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today, we're going to discuss the linked annotations function in Harmony Enterprise. You may also have heard of this as the synchronization arrow. In short, this is an arrow that you can apply to nearly any plot when doing a reservoir analysis and find that same arrow on other diagnostics when looking at the same well. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, let's have a look at this to understand how this can be used to your advantage. Here we have a shale gas well. When we look at the production history, we see that the bottom hole flowing pressure suddenly dropped by about 500 pounds here. And as a result, the rate responded by increasing. There's nothing unusual about this. And when we look at something like the flowing material balance for this well, everything looks normal. It's nice and smooth. We're getting a clear trend. But when we look at our square root time plot or our linear flow analysis, we notice there's a sudden change in the slope here. I should say this might appear as if the fracture conductivity suddenly improved. Is, is something changing in the reservoir? This is again our job as engineers to try to put on our detective hat and answer why is this happening? Is this a reservoir issue or is this some sort of just production change uh, related to operations? So all we need to do is click on this button up here. It says data filter and now we can access this linked annotation button. What I'm going to do is drop it at the point where I know we had this sudden drawdown increase. And what we, what we notice is that same arrow is now appearing on my analysis over here. And one thing I really like to do is I, I click once on this uh, box and I'll just hit the right arrow on my keyboard. And this goes one day forward in the well's history. And we can see how everything is synchronized between the raw data on the left and the analysis on the right. So we can pretty confidently say that this is not a reservoir change. This is just a sudden operating condition change because of that sudden 500 pound increase in our drawdown. If we look at this using material balance time, we notice that it seems a lot smoother and continuous. And this is one of the advantages of material balance time over just square root time. Here we have a different shale gas well and it looks like with the production history there was a bit of a shut-in right here. Part of the history with this well it was initially flowed up the casing with no tubing and then later tubing was installed. We can see that that initial flow path here up the casing and then later tubing was installed. The bottom hole pressure calculations are considering these changing flow paths in time. When we do our flowing material balance analysis, it looks like there is some sort of productivity change happening here, um, almost a productivity increase. So we may wonder, hmm, is there is something happening in the reservoir? When we look at our square root time plot, we also see two very distinct trends here. One trend here, right, and then another trend here. So again, we have to ask ourselves: Is there something changing in the reservoir? What we're going to we're going to do the same thing, right? We're going to click this data filter where we, where we can look at things in a chronological order. Uh, you'll notice that whenever we're doing things like the flowing material balance, this is this is on a cumulative uh, basis, and then even things like our material balance time. These data points are not in a chronological order. So this is why it's important to be able to look at this data in the most kind of raw format. And we know that the tubing was installed at this time. So this is where I'm going to put that arrow here. Okay, and we can see that arrow is applying itself to all of the analysis plots. And now I can confirm that this is not a reservoir change. This is just, again, a sudden operating condition. And the shut-in can sometimes cause this effect with some of these plots. I can see with the flowing material balance that, indeed, this is the same arrow synchronized everywhere, confirming that this is not a reservoir 
uh, change. This is just a, a temporary operating condition change from installing the tubing. And again, like the previous example, looking at this on a material balance time plot can give us a more continuous trend to try to get this linear flow parameter. For conventional wells like this one, we often want to ask ourselves, how long did it take to reach boundary dominated flow? So when we analyze this well, for example, with the flowing material balance, we see a straight line here, and that is going to suggest boundary dominated flow. But I don't really know how long it took to reach there. So I may use this annotation arrow here. I'm going to actually directly apply it to where I think the data starts to become straight. Okay, and I can actually easily click this data filter now and see that in this case, my interpretation says it have to, happened after about a year and a, and a month or two, so about 14 months. I can also see on my blasting game type curve where this annotation error lies. And in this case, it's right as the data begins to curve down the unit slope, which is again boundary do dominated flow here. So this is fairly consistent. And I'm now able to determine for this well how long it took and on what date boundary dominated flow was reached. This is another great use for the annotation arrow. One last way to use this annotation arrow is whenever we are looking at an unconventional well and we are again looking at this square root time plot. In this case, I am trying to see when the well reached the end of linear flow. And we do that by moving this green line and this is subjective. In this case, I'm going to put it right here, but I don't really have a date associated with this. When did linear flow end? Well, again, another opportunity, use this arrow, put it where we want, and this, this might be a good place to even modify the name to say end layer flow, anything we want. We could, in, we could say tubing installed, we could say lots of other things to describe why we're putting this here, what do we know about the well's history. So when I bring up the filter, I can look at this in normal calendar time, it's, I can see it only took about two weeks for this particular well to reach the end of its linear flow. So this is great to know, especially for comparing it against other wells. So what does this mean for you? Well, number one, it's critical, like I mentioned, for engineers to separate changes in the reservoir from just operational changes that are happening with the well. So these linked annotation arrows let you mark some of these following changes to help separate the reservoir change from other factors. So for example, placing an arrow when an offset frac occurred or placing an arrow on the well when the well is shut in. So you can see that on all the analyses. Or placing an arrow whenever there's a choke change in the well. That's a great one. Or placing an arrow once a well has become liquid loaded. Though there's going to be a later video discussing this liquid loaded diagnostic in a bit more detail. Um, or on a reservoir that is shared by multiple wells where pressure interference could be occurring. Placing an arrow when an offset well starts production or is shut in. And that'll help us recognize the well that we're analyzing and seeing if it's being affected with that same timeline. Another interesting way to look at this linked annotation arrow is to first note what the bubble point pressure is of your oil, then look at the historical bottom hole flowing pressure of the well and mark that as an arrow in history. When did the well's flowing pressure drop below the bubble point. This will help you separate multi-phase flow changes from reservoir flow regime changes. And finally, simply knowing what date your well reached boundary dominated flow or the end of linear flow can be helpful for comparative purposes between your wells. Well, thanks for watching. For any questions, be sure to contact me and make sure to subscribe to be notified of next week. Did you know episode?